welcome to the next installation of my uh, thrilling videos on using Cribble as a syslog replacement. I'll go back to my little drawing here. The principle was I originally had a syslog ng server. It, this was the client, here was the server, and what I want to do is I want to have Cribble replace it. There are a lot of reasons to do that. That would be to be able to create your own data lake, massage, and manipulate the data. Um, we're just going to show I get requests, how do you get data into Splunk, how do you get data into Cribble, so we figured this would be a good way of doing it. So I'm going to replace my syslog ng server with a Cribble instance. I've already gone in the previous video and I changed my syslog server to be pushing to Cribble. I changed the source and the destination inside of uh, Cribble. So if I come to my sources, I have a source for syslog. You can see that one green, meaning an active syslog. It's listening on port 514, and I have one active destination, and that would be my file system. And so I'm writing to my file system, and here's my path, YouTube syslog example, here's the output location, and etc. And so that's all set up. So now we have a source and a destination, but we need a route. We need a route between the source and the destination. That's the way I kind of think of it. And so I'm going to come over here, routing, data routes. And these are all the routes. And basically all my data is going down this default route. Um, that doesn't give me a whole lot of a granularity to be able to change my data. It's, what it basically means is every piece of data is going to get, have the exact same things done to it. Well, different rules might want you to have you do different things. So I need different routes. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a route and I'm going to call this YouTube example syslog filter as true. Filter is basically saying, do I want to filter stuff out? I could say only things coming from this syslog default. And that's actually not a bad thing to do because what if I have more than one syslog client sending me data? So then I could actually go in and I could create a different data source for each one of those systems coming in and put it in a different, or I could grab the host coming from it or whatever. That this is That's kind of outside of the scope right now for this example here, but I would change my, this is just a JavaScript filter and I can change it and say, all right, if you meet these criteria, go down this path. If you meet these criteria, go down this path. So I'm going to say that's got to be coming from a syslog server. And then what pipeline do I want to push to? This video isn't about my pipelines. My next video is about my pipelines. So I'm going to just leave it as pointing to main. Do not point to devnull. Devnull is the uh, pipeline that will just make all your data just erase itself as it comes through. There's reasons to do that. You might want to put a dev null at the bottom or whatever the case may be, but for me, I'm going to put a main and that's going to follow the main pipeline. I'll quickly jump over to pipelines. If I come over here, processing pipelines, I can go look at main and what does it do? It just has an eval function. If I read it, it basically says it adds to my log and says cribble. Yes saying it went through Cribble. It's just a way of documenting that Cribble took care, put something, to, did something to the data. I can enable expressions. I'm not going to, where's my output? I made an output member file system YouTube syslog example. There it is. I can give it a nice description. Send logs to syslog server. As an example for YouTube. Right, final, meaning when I'm done, I want the data to go no further. I could say I want it to be handled by more than one route. And so the data can then go, if it, if it applies by the filter, it can go get, have stuff done, and then we'll continue moving down the uh, these these paths. See, what it's going to do is it's going to hit number one first, then number two. Now there's a problem. If you look at number one, it's it's got a final. And so if I leave it in this order, all data is coming through here. It's got no filters. It means it'll never reach down here. And you can actually see this. It says... Now, this route might be unreachable by prior routes and might not receive any data. So in order to fix that, I can just drag and drop. Just grab these little eight dots, move it up, and now this becomes my number one. This becomes number two. I'm going to I'm going to finalize it, and only the data that meets these criteria is going to go through. And I'll hit save. And just like this, I can we should start to see this little. Uh, it's going to tell me how many bytes and stuff are coming through, how many events. That should actually pop up here in just a minute as it updates. Yep, now I can start to see that some of the logs 
are coming through. This is what makes this system so powerful is that I can actually, it will constantly give me data and tell me, am I getting information? What kind of stuff is going through, etc. And so it's basically in the time it's been monitoring, 1.3% of all the events are going down this line. As time goes, you'll see this number shrink and this number grow because pretty much all my logs coming in are syslog and they're coming down this path. But it really allows me to see what, what kind of events are happening. And so we've got 10 events in, we can see spikes, we can see how many events are, how many events do I average, and all these, you can see the timeline move. It's just a really powerful tool. I can, if I really want to, I can actually go and capture data and I can check my little true expressions. So for example, I could take my filter here and see what it's doing so I can capture data. If I hit capture, let it run 10 seconds. What did I do? Okay, before pre-processing pipeline, before the routes. Okay, yeah, so I can't do it before the pre-processing pipeline. I gotta do it before the routes. So as it comes in and hits these routes, I'll start seeing data. There's the data coming in. If I change where it's running and I do it after the routes, so I can do before it pre-processes the pipeline, That's and that why it didn't work, it put that little name in there, so it didn't exist. I can do before the routes, after processing, right before it hits its destination, and so I can see what the data looks like after it's been modified and manipulated. We'll cover these more in examples, but the point is I can see data coming through and what it looks like. And then I could save it, manipulate it however I want. All right, we can see now more of my data is coming through. Nice little timeline going on. And let's go... Let's go see it. So again, where's my data located? Very easy. We'll go to destinations. File system tells me it's in var log cribble YouTube. So if I come in here, cd var log cribble YouTube. If I look at directory, I can see that I have a directory YouTube syslog example. So let's go look in that CD. And I can see my different buckets. And so I'm going to go into that bucket, CD bucket. I want it to be 2300. There's my year. There's my date, my month. And if I do a cat tell minus f and cribble out i should be able to watch these logs actually write themselves here and so we can see the new logs coming in boom another log another log another log another log etc and so i have now created a syslog server with my cribble instance and so the logs are being written here they're being bucketed they're being tarred they're being rolled as the days move on they'll they'll move and so they'll and so it's just like a syslog server and so if i cancel that one of the things i can do we can look at this as this data comes through let's go look at this routing use a little bit of imagination here capture data See, I can see this host equals 192.168. So one of the things I can do is I can actually do this. Host equals like that. Hopefully I'll get some data back. There's my data. So what I can do, notice that, I'm gonna kind of grab this, 
and I could actually make another route and I'm going to call this syslog system B and I'm going to take its filter and I'm going to change it I'm going to say if it's from dot 14 and then I would have a new destination that isn't this path and so I can go in much the same way you can do syslog ng you can you can stack all your syslogs and separate them into different based off hosts they go into different file folders you can do the exact same th thing here just by using this host filter and sending them to a different output and so anyway that should help make things this will basically give you that same ability to handle multiple syslogs coming into your system i hope this was helpful i've now set up the the principle so that i can now use i can go show a whole lot more stuff about how to get data out of syslog anyway uh, i hope you keep watching this there's more videos to this video this uh this video list and on how to get we're going to talk about manipulating some of the data and changing it anyway I hope you found this to be useful and that you keep coming back to my channel and I uh, hope to see you later